Forewarning before we get into this, I still regularly use Stadia, at least a couple times a week. I'll get out my phone or boot it up on my laptop or my Chromecast and play some Red Dead Redemption or more often Elder Scrolls Online. But I often think back, remembering the lead up to Stadia's release. It was announced with a flurry of information and fancy sounding features that pulled me right in. Of course, as we now know, I was one of the few who actually believed what Google was saying. Before we talk about what actually happened to Google Stadia, it's worth looking at the history of the service, as it's important to understand why this service was dead on arrival. What do PlayStation Home, the Xbox One, and Google Stadia have in common? I mean besides not being remembered too fondly. The correct answer is Phil Harrison. In 2018, Google did a short demo where you could play Assassin's Creed Odyssey from a Chrome browser. At the time, they didn't state why they did this, but people had theories. It played smoothly, and outlets reported on it positively. But after it was over, it was largely forgotten. That is, until GDC in 2019, when Google held their own panel and Phil Harrison got up on stage. Our vision for Stadia is simple. One place for all the ways we play. This was the opening sentiment of the 2019 Google GDC talk, which set forth a pretty compelling business structure. The promise of a good deal for players, good relationships with devs, and easy marketing through YouTube creators. Stadia promised unique features only achievable in the cloud, buttons in YouTube trailers that take you directly to the in-game browser, save states you can share with a link, and huge levels of processing power available without taking up any space in your home. Many were skeptical, and Google's history justified this skepticism. From the defunct Google Glass, to the modular phone concept Project Ara, to the sonar-based Project Soli, that eventually got used in the Pixel 4, the phone that is often cited as the downfall of the Pixel lineage. Google has a long history of going outside their comfort zone, not knowing what they're doing, and giving up immediately after not seeing ROI within the first few months. Am I foreshadowing what's to come? You'll have to wait and see. Ending with a promise of launching the service in 2019, there wasn't long to wait to experience the future of gaming and being a big believer in the cloud as the future of gaming. As soon as day one pre-orders for the Founders Edition opened, I had my cash ready. In the latter half of 2019, I got a package from Google. It contained a letter of thanks, a Chromecast with official custom firmware, and a Founders Edition Google Stadia controller. The future was in my hands. You may know what happened next. Or, more likely, you have no idea whatsoever. Which is entirely the point. Many people assumed Stadia was a bad service purely based on hearsay. Google wasn't trusted by gamers, and there was a massive debate about game ownership in a cloud-based world. Admittedly, this was a debate which ignored the fact that game ownership had been dead for almost a decade by the time Stadia released, but that's beside the point. Even for those interested in the service, how the service actually works was convoluted at best and frustratingly confusing at worst. And the genius way they decided to showcase it was with massive, text-heavy diagrams and infographics instead of, you know, simplifying the explanation. Google actively made it as hard as possible to figure out how the service was going to work when it launched and that pushed away many people who were initially on board. But nevertheless, there I was, controller in hands on day one. And for a couple of weeks, I was happy with the service. In 2019, and even beyond that, debatably until the last couple of months, Google Stadia was the best cloud gaming offering you could get your hands on. Compare it to GeForce Now, which not only relied upon you already owning the games on other platforms, but also ran on underpowered PCs that were prone to bugs and false starts, leaving you staring at a Windows 10 screen with nothing to do. 
It's the same story with what was, at the time, called xCloud. A beta service Microsoft was testing out, xCloud in 2019 and 2020 was chronically prone to freezing, stuttering, and crashes in every single game, no matter what. Compare this to the clean startup of Google Stadia, getting you straight to the game. Even now, Google's penchant for machine learning shines through, and no matter what your connection speed is, it will always prioritize input response time over anything else, which is honestly genius, and no other service has come close. But let's not pat Google on the back too much. Remember the features I mentioned earlier? When I said they planned to have buttons you click in YouTube videos, save states, and all of those other features, well, none of them were actually there when the platform launched. Even the Google Assistant wasn't available in-game at launch like they promised. I mean, there's a Google Assistant button on the Stadia controller. This was the straw that broke the camel's back. And from day one, Stadia was mercilessly dunked on all across the gaming world. It was all downhill from here. Stadia released the world unfinished, unloved, and overburdened with hate and expectation. Even Google themselves have admitted defeat, perhaps not directly, but through action. Google has been openly and actively selling the Stadia infrastructure as a service the publishers can use to set up their own streaming services. Google Stadia still works. It works exactly the same as it did at launch, in fact. They even added a lot of the features that they promised during the announcement, and then they stopped. Game releases are infrequent to the point of Overcooked being a major story. Stadia is stagnated, not dead, but adjacent to dead. Phil Harrison and all the other major players have jumped ship, and from reports, it's being run by a skeleton crew. I still think cloud gaming is the future, but Stadia isn't the first time it failed. There's a dark horse in our midst though. Xbox Game Cloud, no longer in beta, is a really solid service now. It's not quite as clean and smooth as Stadia, but it's the next best thing. And as of a week ago, you can play Fortnite for free from the cloud on any device without having to pay a cent. You can do it right now. Xbox have done the unthinkable by attaching cloud gaming to services everyone is already familiar with. The shift to cloud gaming becomes much easier to stomach if it's presented as just an option. But who knows, maybe Xbox Game Cloud will fail as well. But I know that one day we'll be forced to move to the cloud, as we have with TV, music, movies, work, business, money, and every other aspect of our lives. It's only a matter of time. The sea is flowing that way, and the tide is coming in. Until that day comes, I'll still be here, dipping in and out of Stadia until it inevitably gets shuttered. It had everything it needed to succeed, but a mix of immediate public pushback even before launch, and poor handling by Google themselves led to one of gaming's many forgotten false starts. We hope you enjoyed this video, but there's more. This is a heavily abridged version of an article available over on IndieGameFans.com. Please head over there and give it some love. And be sure to subscribe and keep an eye on the channel for the latest indie game news reviews and think pieces just like this one.